Rewards. We see this everywhere we look. There's always rewards of some sort. You know, you used to see it in gas station put tack boards or in grocery stores, or they used to put up them signs on, on posts. A reward for something that was lost that someone is seeking to find. And now we're seeing it on social media. People are putting rewards out there. Something has been lost, and people are reaching out to the community to get help finding that which they have lost. And in turn, they are offering a reward for the help. Now, the wonderful thing about that kind of a situation is it is a positive reward that you can receive if you help find these items. But the fact remains that in our lives, from day to day, we are faced with rewards that are positive, that are rewards for the positive, or could be rewarded for negative things. Now, this starts with the little kids, okay? When, when we're... When, when, we're, as parents, teaching our little kids how we want them to act and how we want them to behave. When, and the fact that we want them to make certain choices, we give them rewards for doing good things. When a child does something that the parent determines is the correct course of action, they get a reward. When Frankie uses the toilet, he gets a piece of candy. It's, you know, a reward system. Now likewise, if a child is screaming and crying and throwing a fit for something and you end up giving them what they want, then you are inadvertently rewarding the negative behavior. Now, as parents, I know we have those moments where the crying, you just give them what they want to stop the crying and the screaming. But the problem with that is, is that you then are in reinforcing in your child that they need to scream and throw a fit to get what they want. In the end, you ask yourself, will we rather reward the good or the bad behavior? Now this reward system does not stop there. It continues on when we become parents of snotty teenagers. Yes, I deal with it myself. <laughs> and we again become faced with that decision. How are we going to teach them to be positive and productive adults? Now if our child is breaking the rules and being disrespectful and they just do whatever they wish and we still give them what they want, we are instilling that value in them. And it lets them think that they will get what they want by being rude individuals. So we offer rewards such as an allowance or other rewards for them doing those things that we want them to do, like cleaning their rooms, or doing chores like dishes and taking out garbage, or cleaning the litter box. But as we prepare our teenagers, for the real world, would we prefer to reward them for the positive or the negative things that they're doing? Now this reward system, it doesn't end there. It goes on when we become adults. We get into the working world and we're rewarded with things such as a paycheck. And we are faced with situations in our working worlds and in other aspects of our lives where we can do what we feel is right or we can compromise our morals and values to get ahead in life. You know, you hear about the working world. They say it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. You know, you got to get, you know, you got to get to him before he gets to you. And you got to determine who you need to step over to climb up that ladder of success. And we, so we are faced with situations in which we could get a promotion, get more money, have a nicer paycheck, if only we are willing to do that which we may not feel comfortable doing. If we do not do these things that are against our morals and values, we may not get that promotion that we're seeking. I 
recall this personally when I was in the sales world. And I would be asked or directed by my bosses to intentionally say things to the customers that would not give them the full information about the product we were selling. Yet it was not lying either because you weren't making anything up. You weren't just not giving them all the information. Now, I would refuse to be that way. And in all of those sales jobs, I ended up getting fired because my sales numbers were not as high as everybody else's. So we get rewarded for that shady behavior and that could end up getting you the promotions and the pay that provides you with an amazing retirement and a wonderfully comfortable life after working. I remember one guy I worked with in the sales field, his, his philosophy was scam and slam. Scam them, get the sale, and hang up on them. He ended up running the company I worked for. So, you can be rewarded for sticking to your morals and your values in an emotional sense and trusting that God will provide for you doing what is right. And I like it because we get that idea of God providing for us, doing what He asks. When we read our Old Testament lesson this morning, when God spoke to Abraham saying, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So here's a man who loves his God. A God who gave him and his wife a son when they were in their later years of life only to ask him to sacrifice this child, the only child they have, to the God they love. Now if you were faced with that order by God, the God you loved, would you be able to make that sacrifice? I know for me, that would be really, really hard. Yet this man, he prepares to take his son on this journey to sacrifice him to the God whom he loves and follows. He went all the way to that moment where he was going to take his own child's life. He had that child tied up, laying on that wood. And he was going to give this child back to the same God that gave him this child. Because he trusted that the Lord will provide for him. Now luckily for Abraham and Isaac, the Lord stopped him before sacrificing his son and offered him a reward for doing what was asked of him. We hear it said when we are told that Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. See, Abraham knew that the Lord would provide for him if he did what he was told and he was provided for with that ram that he was able to use as a sacrifice instead of using Isaac. Now see, it is when we let sin, the sins of the world get to us that we end up losing sight of trusting our Lord and Savior and believing in what He can do for us. When we lose sight of that, we truly become slaves to the sins of the world. Now luckily for our sake, the Lord has set us free from all sin and has allowed us the chance to live as He would have us live. We hear this in our lesson from Romans today when it is said that thanks be to God that you, having once 
been slaves to have sin have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted. We have this chance to turn our lives away from sin and the evils of this world and to stay true to the Lord and do as the Lord would like us to do. And God provides a reward. He offers a reward for those of us that decide to be true to Him and His teachings instead of being slaves to sin and the sinful ways of those around us. See, we get a chance to learn about the heavenly reward that God has laid out for us when we read in that Romans lesson today when it says, now that you have been free from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. This reward is offered to all of the Lord's creation as a free gift. A gift that we do not need to do anything to receive. Now, God does ask something from us, though. He does ask that since He has given us this free gift, this wonderful gift of His love and grace and mercy, that we treat others with the love and kindness that the Lord offered us because the Lord has cared for us with His love and kindness. See, God wants us to be faithful to Him and to thus treat others the way God treats us and to welcome those that the Lord welcomes. We hear it said in our Gospel lesson today that whoever welcomes you welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the One who sent me. Likewise, when we welcome those that the Lord would welcome, then we are welcoming those in the name of the Lord and we are welcoming the Lord. And I really love how this Gospel lesson ends when it tells us that whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Something as simple as offering a cup of cold water to those whom others turn their backs on is something that is very big to our Lord. And that is what we all need to keep in our hearts and in our minds. So I ask myself, and I ask all of you today, how often do we pass those that we may consider to be the kind of people that we should avoid? How often do we rush around in our daily lives and fail to see that which is around us that needs the love and caring attention that the Lord would like us to give to it? How often are we letting the sinful world that is around us seep into our thoughts and our way of action and our way of thinking that we fail to give that cup of cold water to the little ones of the Lord. By not paying attention to those around us and keeping our thoughts about us and our lives, we may be rewarded by getting more done in a day than we expected. Or we may be able to obtain more hours and get that overtime that pads that paycheck or we may even get what we want because we did the deeds 
that others did not want to get dirty doing. In the end, will we truly feel good about ourselves for the rewards that we gain through negative actions or through our positive actions? I pray for all of us here today that we take time to slow down, to look at what is around us and see what part of God's creation needs the attention, compassion, and love that the Lord would like us to give. That we keep the sinful side of this world away from us. And that we seek the heavenly rewards that come from the come from the Lord. The rewards that we will never lose. Those are the rewards that I seek to receive. Love and peace to you all this morning.